knowing the days we live in, knowing the times and the seasons, knowing God and talking to Him, having a relationship with Jesus, being led by the Spirit of God and being taught by His Word, being inspired by those who are living His testimonies and giving truth a meaning that has a purpose and a design founded and held by God Himself. You would wonder, if you looked at the world, why people don't believe. But also recognizing that in the world there are powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, that there are things that are happening in the church as well as in the life of a believer that challenges the very foundation of our faith, that causes many people to go back to their roots to discover and uncover where they've gone astray or gone wrong, where they've made a mistake, where they've lost their hope their faith. Possibly they may have sinned and caused themselves to have a separation between themselves and God and all they need to do is confess their sins because he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Perhaps they were not taught that yes you will suffer diseases. There will come a time when something will cause you to stumble possibly over the word of God where you may have learned that you were going to never suffer any of these diseases and then suddenly you do. Or your faith may have been such that you built it upon the reality of only as long as you were prosperous, you were found to be faithful and true. But as long as you were impoverished, you forgot to know that God said, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. In such a time as this, people lose hope. They despair. They fall apart. They fall away. They find themselves in the very challenges that God said, I am taking you through this. You will suffer persecution. You will go through tribulation. Oh, you may not go through the great tribulation, and some people will. <coughs> the sadness being <coughs> that in order to survive it, they will die in it. Will you die for your faith? And that's probably a great challenge and a fear for many people. But you see, there's also a truth that people forget. We have a hope, and the hope of our calling is Jesus Christ himself. For if Jesus has said, many are called and few are chosen, those to whom he has chosen, he will give of his own spirit. He will cause those whom he has inscribed on the palm of his hands to never be forsaken, to never be lost. But recognize that as a disciple of Jesus Christ, likewise, you will go through the same thing that his disciples went through. You will be challenged to the very faith in the core of your being and even desert Jesus as much as you thought you would follow him. For did not every one of his disciples leave him before he died? Find yourself in that position and you'll know why every one of us as human beings will go through tribulation. We will go through challenges that God has said would shake our very core even if we have seen God himself we will deny his existence at some point in time in our life because the reality of our life is so overwhelming that we accept that the Spirit of God hold us. We would have no faith at all. So our hope and our confidence isn't in man. It isn't in the Word of God only. It isn't in our faith alone. But it is in Jesus Christ founded and assured and rested by God himself that it will be tested because we will be found faithless so that he may be found faithful because God alone is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus Christ himself is the one who began a good work in us and he will complete it unto the day of salvation so that we would find ourselves always casting our crowns down at his feet, bending the knee and honoring the Lord Jesus Christ, declaring that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father because it is what He has done, not anything that we could have done of ourselves. Because even our faith, as strong as we may think it is, at times will be found faithless. God shall wipe away all tears. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow. For the former things are passed away. He will swallow up death in victory. 
and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. The inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. The voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. The things which are not seen are eternal. There are those that have a fear of death and dying, that have that reality of terror in looking at the songs of the night. When they last will sing the lyrics to a word, the lyrics to a song, the lyrics to a tune that only God himself will bring them through. For when you face that darkness of passing through from this life to the next, you will discover that you did not end there, but that God has taken you where he is. So that in death, the song that is sung in the night will be that which is sung in the day. That God has swallowed up the victory in the elimination of death forever. For death is, for a lot of many people, the most terrifying thing of all. But death for me is like a reality check to remind us that this is not our home. This is not where we belong. I know that I am not a part of this world, but that I am fit for a destiny and a purpose and a chosen generation that is going out of this last generation to become the first of many brethren. The first of those who will be gone on to become the reality of the sons and daughters of God. For we shall see Jesus come again. And when we do, though the sorrow may exist for all those who are not ready and were not prepared and have chosen to go to hell than to heaven and then discovered that hell was not what they thought it was and that heaven was everything we said and more, then God shall wipe away tears and we will remember no more. Whether in heaven or hell, we will remember them no more. For our focus and our attention will be on God. Raised up together in Christ Jesus, fear not, I am he that liveth. Father, O oh Father, I will, I will, that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am. We are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. You are complete in him, which is the head. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So you see, in bondage to this life, in the world that we live, in the things that we see and the way that we've heard, we have a hope. And the hope of our calling makes us sure that we have an assurance that is greater than anything that we ever would have imagined before. That we would have a reality that God not only is in us, but God is with us. 
that God shall take us through and bring us to the place that once we pass through death, we will recognize that death is swallowed up in victory and there is no sting or deception that the enemy can bring to the reality of the knowledge of Jesus Christ himself as he stands there and welcomes us into the kingdom. I look and see and hear of the world and its passing away and the people that want to save the world. I say to you, save not the world that you see, but save those that are in the world from destruction that is to come. For the things that are seen are not important, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, always, and all these things would be added to you. You would enjoy the temporary time of blessing here, even as you go through the trials and tribulations. God will bless you in your day. He'll bless you in your night. He'll take you through the day and the night. But God will also show you what is wrong and show you what is right. And when it comes time for you to lay your head and to rest, God will give you peace. The day will come when you will rest in peace. But of that assurance, we have a great reassurance now that the peace of God that passes all understanding will rule our heart and mind in Christ Jesus as long as we stay in Him and walk with Him today.